Hello and welcome to yet another podcast from the cab of my Land Rover. I'm Paul and this is the Mastering Portrait Photography podcast. So here we are once again. I'm sitting in the Land Rover heading over to the Hearing Dogs. I've had a week's camping and just I've got just enough fuel uh, to make it to my client. Uh, usually I prefer to have a bit more latitude than that, uh, but it's been a long week and I haven't had a chance to go and fuel up. Uh, so last week I took a week off. Oh man, it was amazing. It was absolutely beautiful. Uh, sun shone mostly. It rained a little bit with some horrific wind, which if you're camping is something of a distraction. Uh, at one point, it really did feel like the tent was about to uh, lift off around us. Um, but all is good, let's just wait for these cars to come through here. Our little village is growing exponentially. And so we've got these little bottlenecks on the road and I get really antsy when people don't wave and say thanks. I'm sitting here saying thank you to all. Oh, thank you, at least you did. Uh, I hate it when people just, don't even bother to acknowledge that you sat and waited for them. It just does my head in. BMW drivers, a lot of them, it seems to me. Anyway, not that I'm casting dispersions on my friends who own BMWs, of course. Oh, there's an Audi doing full donuts. Okay, there we go. So yeah, it was lovely. Uh, came back all refreshed uh, to a very, very busy week. I thought it would be, relatively speaking, quiet, and it has been anything but. Partly due to, of course, whenever you take a week out of a a studio, a one camera studio, there's always going to be a backlog of work, not just shooting, but getting through some of the edits. Uh, but also one or two shoots. So what's happened this week? Well, uh, what did we have? Before I went on holiday, we photographed the new publicity shots for the Royal Institution of Great Britain. So the Royal Institution, for those who don't know, is a scientific institution. I've been working with them for about a, about a decade, I think now, on and off. Um, full of science, full of exciting stuff. It was where Faraday first first developed the electromagnet and from that of course came the motor. So if anyone thinks that this is just a niche, you know, a niche pocket of science, what Faraday invented in this wonderful institution is something that every every motorized thing on the planet is derived from and certainly with the advent of electric motors in cars going forwards we can all thank a Victorian scientist called Michael Faraday uh, and it was his uh, the presentation studio there's a lecture theatre there but it was his lab that was in the basement of this place um, and it's still there anyway I was photographing for this year's scientists who are going to um, who are going to um, present the Christmas lectures now the Christmas lectures are something of an institution for me, forgive the pun, in that me and my father would sit down every Christmas and watch these things. They used, they used to be four episodes, I think, they're now three episodes. It used to be live science, it used to be live on the television, now it's recorded as live or as close to live as they can get it when you're setting fire to stuff. Uh, it can be a little bit hairy, lots of explosions, uh, and the one year we had, um, it was, I think, it was a, is it called a Tesla coil? Massive bit of kit and we all had to be very careful because the voltages it was producing were enough to completely and utterly fry the television cameras and it did fry a couple of them. So it can be quite exciting. Anyway, this uh, just before I went on holiday, we photographed two of the three scientists who are going to be presenting. Sadly, the third scientist uh, is over in Dublin and so uh, couldn't, uh, couldn't photograph her. We had to use another photographer, so thank you to uh, the, the guys who did, uh, a guy called John Allen, nice guy who photographed the third scientist and this week part of what I've got to do is bring all of those together in post uh, and make some kind of coherent sense of it. So that was Royal Institution, uh, obviously I'm on my way to the Hearing Dogs uh, which is always, always a pleasure. Love working with the Hearing Dogs, been working with them for so long now uh, that it's just uh, an absolute an absolute joy. Uh, next week, uh, well, I could be covering a wedding, weirdly enough. Uh, another photographer 
Uh, I'm not going to show. It's not going to share his name because, of course, he may not want <laughs> he may not want his bride and groom to know uh, that should the worst happen and he gets stuck in France, which is where he is right now, or rather, if he gets stuck in quarantine coming back from France, uh, then I may have to cover his wedding. So we're holding a day clear next week uh, as a favour to a friend just to try and. Oh man, look at that! Somebody's dumped a load of rubbish in the lay-by in our country lanes. What absolute shit! Man, that makes me mad. Why is it all right for you to take all the crap you can't get rid of and dump it somewhere where we have to live with it? How is that all right? That's not all right. That's just being oh, just a slob. Uh, anyway, sorry, didn't mean to rant, but it just really upsets me when the country lanes are covered in crap. Uh, we got some roadworks. Nice man's changed it to go. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Oh, I don't know what they're doing though. Apparently they're chucking dirt all over the floor. What are they doing there? No idea what they're doing there. Cleaning the gutters by the look of it. Uh, okay, so back on to topic. Uh, obviously, you know, with these uh, COVID and separation, it's been tricky at the studio, but we did a portrait shoot yesterday. Uh, beautiful. Ah, oh, man, it, the kind of portrait shoot that I always hoped we'd be doing. Uh, a, a married couple brought their mum in to be photographed. Well, a married couple, the guy, I don't know how old the lady is, but... Uh, the husband is celebrating his 60th birthday and his mother-in-law, her mother, is celebrating her 90th birthday. And, you know, you kind of sort of stereotype a little bit. I didn't know what the shoot would be like, uh, but they walked in the door and, as is so often the way, uh, the 90-year-old lady, the mum, had a twinkle in her eye and she ran me ragged. She was hilarious. Uh, she took absolutely no truck. It didn't matter how much I thought I was in control. I really wasn't. Uh, she kept saying, well, you tell me what to do, dear. Uh, and she didn't really mean it. <laughs> it was brilliant. Uh, big smiles, beautiful lady, beautiful photographs, I hope. Uh, I haven't yet seen them. I've taken them off camera, but I haven't yet had a chance to go through them. Uh, but just a wonderful session, a couple of hours of messing around. It was hot, mind you. Uh, usually we start, all of our shoots start in the garden uh, primarily because it chills people out and then we move into the studio but yesterday was so humid and so hot that we actually started in the studio where I can run the air conditioning and we only went outside uh, at the last second so that we didn't have too much of a struggle with glistening skin and all the rest of it and luckily there was a big storm brewing I say luckily, luckily from a lighting point of view because I don't know if you're aware, but the kind of uh, the kind of light you get uh, as a storm builds is simply fantastic. It, there's something about the way it pings around, uh, and so the edge came off the sunshine, uh, and before we knew it, had this wonderful, wicked light, absolutely wicked light, to photograph this lady. And hopefully, they'll give me permission to share those images in the coming weeks. And shoots like that actually help keep us motivated. You know, it, it is a tricky time. It's not easy. I mean, obviously yesterday we had to do all of it with social distancing, but still I'm, I'm forever surprised. I said to the guys, you know, do you want a cup of coffee? Oh yes. <laughs> so like I said in previous podcasts, you know, we're running the dishwasher hot, uh, wearing uh, gloves and things to serve, wearing a mask and all the rest of it. Uh, but people still want their coffee. Uh, you can't get away from that. We must serve nice coffee or something. Uh, but honestly, we're being buoyed by having the most incredible clients through this time the feedback we get the nice comments we get the reaction to the photography the reaction to me and my team at the studio the reaction to the studio some days you know although we've had to slow the pace because we really can only have one client in the studio at a time whereas previously we could have two maybe three different things going on now we really can only have one uh, which has its it's challenges, but in a way I'm quite enjoying that. I'm enjoying the fact that we've had to flatten out the diary a bit. It makes it a little a little more uh, spaced out. It makes it a little more chilled. Uh, and hopefully that will result in us being able to spend a little more time with each of our clients. Um, and we'll see what that does to the overall numbers. It may do nothing. It may be that the uh, recession, that obviously everyone's reading in the headlines right now, may have a bigger impact than the fact I can spend more time with more time with our clients who knows uh, but at least it's you know the, the, you have to hold on to the positives you can't just focus on the negatives you have to look at all of the positives and the one positive for us is I am getting the time to spend not just with the clients but on the photoshopping 
uh, afterwards. Uh, some of the lovely comments. We had a lovely uh, comment on the podcast actually the other day. Uh, and it just very simply it just says, as a portrait photographer, this is a fantastic uh, podcast. Uh, thanks from Pennsylvania, USA. And I really liked that, partly because it's just simple and succinct. Uh, and it's always nice. It's always nice um, to get positive feedback because when you're recording, un unlike our clients, when I'm photographing in the studio, of course, we get to see our clients a couple of times. I get to interact with them. I interact with them on the shoot. We interact with them in the reveal. And then we interact with them when we do the handover of whatever it is they purchase. But with a podcast, I basically sit on my own. <laughs> I sit on my own somewhere. Sometimes the studio, sometimes a Land Rover. And record some ideas about things going on. Uh, and then you have no idea whether that's... I mean, yeah, I know it's being listened to. I can see the stats. Uh, but you have no idea whether people are enjoying it or not. So when you get a nice comment like that, honestly, uh, to Macro Love Photographer from the US, thank you, because it just made uh, my day. Anyway, purpose of this particular podcast, today is the A-Level Exam Results Day in England, and our son Jake has just had his results. He got what he needed to get into university. It wasn't quite what he'd hoped for, it's one grade lower than he would have liked, but he got himself onto the course he wants to go and study in Loughborough, which is a town in, broadly speaking, in the middle of the UK. Um, and it's a sports and engineering university. It specializes in sports. It's where the England cricket team have their training headquarters. It's where they do a lot of the scientific research into sport technology, into training methods. And Jake, who's a fanatical cricketer, is now just beside himself. He's going to go and study sports technology. But it hasn't been an easy road getting there. And there are a couple of lessons along the way and I thought they were interestingly applicable. Obviously getting a teenage boy to see that putting in some effort in return for something is not an easy trick. And I remember when I was a teenager, equally not really comprehending that if you put in a load of effort the likelihood is you're going to get a load back out, whether that's in exam results, whether you're putting effort into relationships, whether you're putting effort into, I don't know, sport, whether you're training. Uh, in my case, as a musician, if I practiced as a drummer, the more I practiced, uh, the more decent gigs I got, really. Um, and gradually, as I got more and more decent gigs, the less and less I needed to practice. And there is an irony in that, in that as a role model, I remember thinking when I was starting out as a drummer, and I guess as a photographer too, that it seemed to me that the people who um, had made it never seemed to practice, so why should I? You know, the arrogance of youth, apart from anything else, um, if they don't need to practice, I don't need to practice. But of course the truth is that they don't need to practice because they're playing regularly. And even then, if you actually pay attention, of course, to the, in my case, the great drummers, but the same is true of sportsmen and women or actors and actresses, they never stop training. It just appears that way. And you don't get something for nothing. You can't, you cannot not do any work. You cannot just sit on your hands and expect stuff to come to you. Um, and watching Jake go through his A-levels has been an interesting exercise in that. It didn't matter how much I tried to explain it to him. He never, I, I would suspect he may get it now. I think he gets it now but I'm not sure he did throughout. And, and at his age, I didn't either until I suddenly decided I wanted to go to university. And luckily for me, I hadn't left it too late. And luckily for Jake, nor had he. And all credit to him, during his, the run into the mocks. So Jake is one of those people who can cram at the last minute and he will just retain all that information and do well in an exam. Frustrating though that is, uh, he's one of those uh, people. But for his mocks, we managed to persuade him that it would be a good idea to put as much effort in as he could, simply because when Harriet went through some of her exams, uh, going back to 2014 now, my dad died. And because of that, it threw the whole family. The, I mean, I was up and down, my dad had had a brain tumor. And so during the time when Harriet was revising and trying to get her head down for her exams, basically I was running up and down to North Wales to try and, um, give my mum some support and my dad some support during a very difficult time but luckily during her mocks before this had all happened she got good scores and they counted for her so when her exam results came through 
or when they were we were allowed to put in some mitigating circumstances and we could show with her history that clearly she was a good student um, but circumstances had somewhat uh, impacted things and so with Jake we managed to use the same psychology and he worked he grafted for his mocks as a parent did he graft as much as I would have liked no not even close <laughs> of course he didn't uh, but he's a teenage boy so we try not oh you're just gonna pull out okay you just pull out mate doesn't matter how much you accelerate I still had to slam the brakes on not to hit you well done um, sorry <laughs> back in the room or back in the van back in the Land Rover um, of course he didn't revise as much as I would have liked. I would have liked him to revising every night as a model student. But instead, actually, I have a model child. He's lovely, he's full of character, he loves his sport, he's interested by science and life. And schoolwork, frankly, is not the highest thing on his list because it means sitting at a desk, studying, and that simply isn't Jake's style. Hence the fact he's going off to study sport technology where he can be involved and around sports and coaching and trainers but he did switch it on he did spend a huge amount of time for Jake an inordinate amount of time grafting for his mocks in spite of the fact he didn't really see the point we did we really did and so we made sure that he worked I say made sure you know you can't tell someone that you can persuade them you can cajole them yeah, psychological blackmail, whatever it takes, of course, as a parent. Uh, I'm not necessarily, I don't rate myself as a good parent. There are many things I am, but I'm probably not that. However, Jake did get his head down, he did work, and he got good results in his mocks. And it's a really good job, too, because obviously, with the A level results, essentially, that's his safety net. Because it, this year, there have been no exams, and the teachers have given estimated grades, which have then been normalised. And whatever else has happened, Jake has been given the same grades as he got in his mocks, which is brilliant. Although he would have liked to have done better uh, in the actual exams, he's still got what he got in his mocks. And the university have let him know this morning that he's won his place. And I think it's just a sobering lesson. It's just a nice reminder that you don't get something for nothing. You have to be uncomfortable. You can't just coast through it. No matter how good you are, how gifted you are, you can't coast. And many of Jake's friends who coasted through their mocks and just hoped to pull it out of the bag in the exams, they've now got a problem because they're using a, a mock results as part of their assessment. And of course that means they've been left to a degree high and dry. And so to have Jake, to have watched him go through this reminds me, it should remind all of us, you can't have something for nothing the amount of effort you put in, there is a correlation with what you put in and what you get out. It might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, but it certainly will be there, whether it's, in my case, whether I was when I was a drummer, putting my uh, hours and hours and hours in, learning my paradiddles and rudiments and getting my chops down and learning to read the music, or whether it's Jake with his cricket, uh, whether it's Jake with his exam results, of course, bringing it back on topic, whether it's any of us, with our photography. It may look like some of the people who've made it to the top are not, they don't have to learn and they don't have to practice, but nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, I learn more now per day than I did when I was starting out because I have a much bigger base on which to base it. I have more experiences on which to take forward and I have a much, much wider network of influences than I've ever had. So it may look like people are doing nothing, but of course they are. Literally, you can't get something for nothing. And on that happy note, I'm pulling into the gates of the hearing dogs, which I am looking forward to enormously. And uh, until next time, remember, be kind to yourselves. Take care.